If I go on, say, an eating disorder forum or a goth forum, I have to create a character and be someone else because I just came to that forum to be anonymous like anyone else and I can't do that anymore. I'm starting to realise there's no way you can be open and real anymore. I was about to say one day we are going to lose someone to cancel culture. Someone is going to kill themselves over cancel culture. But actually, I looked it up and it's already happened. Well, hello, my dudes. It feels like a really long time since I've just sat down and had a bit of a podcasty waffle with the occasional possible ASMR sound if uh, if I encounter things that sound lovely because I've got myself plugged in so I can hear. But um, yeah, I had some things that I wanted to talk about and also they kind of stemmed into some things that I wanted to share with you because they're so cheerful making. So first of all, I guess I'll get into the things that I need to tell you guys just to explain some stuff, which is to kind of explain why I took my music down. I took all my music down. I took both of my blogs down, my writing blogs down. Temporarily, the Petrescent Bane is back up, but the Angry Vampires blog is not back up. Um, I removed a lot of videos from my channel. Uh, some of them will go back up, like the Genderqueer Waffles. I will put those back up at some point. But I basically expunged a lot of me off the internet, and I know some of that stuff is missed by you guys. I've, like, particularly... The music, I've had a lot of people being quite sad about the fact that that's not there. And the thing to say about the music is that I do intend to get the vast majority of it back up. And I'd been meaning actually to take it down and improve it for a while. It bothered me when I re-uploaded 4AM Vampire Blues. Basically, like if, if you don't know about my music and you don't care, then this is this is a boring waffle. But basically there was a glitch a while back and my first album got taken down. And I was really annoyed with myself for re-uploading it in its previous state. I wanted to improve it a little bit before I put it back up and I was just too lazy. So it had been bothering me for a while. Like, I, I can do more things. I'm, I'm still a shit musician. I'm never going to be anything other than a shit musician. But I've learned a few more things since I released both of those albums. And the second album I released... When I was an alcoholic, I recorded the whole thing as a raging alcoholic. As a result, there's a lot about that album that I hate. And so some of those recordings I would like to just completely redo, um, as well as adding some kind of tweaks and things to the other recordings that are there. The music will be coming back. I just have to find the time to work on it. And before we go any further, can I just explain something that you might have noticed in my videos recently? If you can hear right now this very strange and not particularly pleasant squeaking, creaking kind of sound that kind of seems to be in time with my voice, it's not a microphone issue, it's actually my jaw. My jawbone is becoming increasingly creaky. I'm getting old, so there's a very annoying sound effect in the background of my videos. But anyway, to return to the subject, yeah, I took a lot of stuff off the internet in December when there were so many people coming at me. It was like realising there is so much me on the internet and most of it is like a decade old or up to a decade old. All of this stuff on my blog posts, my music, all of this stuff, it's so old. And a lot of it is very personal. It's from before I even started YouTube. So all I was posting it to was my closest friends. I was like, the, I don't, they don't represent me and they're not things I would say today. So I'm quite, quite glad I took them down. But it was quite a bizarre and disturbing thing to suddenly have a whole social media forum kind of pouring over everything you've ever done in your life online. Just imagine if you're private Facebook, like the one that you share just with your real life friends. Imagine if you've been posting on that Facebook to this close-knit group for about 15 years. 
And then suddenly the whole internet, it feels like, blows up, hates you and wants to read through all of this stuff. And imagine they hack it and it's open to the whole world. And suddenly people are reading through stuff that you wrote 15 years ago that you thought you were only posting to your very best friend. And now it's 15 years later, the whole internet is crawling all over it and it's got like pictures of your house in it or whatever, or it's got personal information about where you live. And it, all of these things are suddenly open to the world. The world is interested. The world is after you. That is how it felt. Although I have had, you know, controversy and things go down with my channel before and although I've had docs attempts and things like that before, my channel's grown a lot since the last time I really had something like that happen and therefore the intensity of it is much bigger. And while all of this was going on, I did have the spirits looking after me and looking out for me. And they would push me towards checking on social media posts or making social media posts if I needed to act or I needed to shut something down. They were guiding me to what I had to do. It was like a really bizarre, amazing experience um, because I would have been so lost in dealing with that controversy on my own. Um, I probably would have just hidden under a rock, maybe forever, maybe just you know, deleted my whole channel and, and quit YouTube and, and, you know, been screwed for, for what I was going to do with my life. That probably would have been my approach without the spirits. But fortunately, I had them looking after me. However, there is only so much that spirits can do. I had to do most of the grunt work. You know, I had to be aware, look, people are saying this kind of thing. You need to respond. You need to clarify this. Um, which meant that I had to Google myself. And I've talked in the past about Googling myself and the fact that I used to do it a lot when I was an alcoholic and I hated myself because I wanted I wanted hatred coming at me. I wanted that feeling of anger. It was the only thing I could feel and I enjoyed it. So I used to Google myself and it was awful. And since I got sober, I have never Googled myself since because it's I don't recommend you ever do it, honestly, because people will be quite polite to you. People will be lovely to you when they know you're in the room, you know, when it's your own YouTube comments or whatever. Generally speaking, you guys are lovely. But when it's places on the internet that people don't know I'm in the room, um, obviously people are a lot more blunt about what they say or are outright disgusting about the things they'll say. So I had to Google myself and even finding out things like there being certain sub forums dedicated just to talking about me, that was really weird because I can understand, I can understand a sub forum like that that has a more specific inspiring topic like talking about a TV series where, you know, things are going somewhere, you want to swap theories, you want to stop swap stuff about the actors, about the directing, about the hidden codes going on in the series, like blah, blah, blah. Um, I could understand talking about a celebrity's private life if they've got something dramatic going on in their life, but I don't understand having a sub forum just dedicated to someone who lives a very, very boring life um, and makes videos. And it's like you can discuss anything you have to discuss in the comments of that video, to my mind, and that's where you'd put it. Like, my life is the most dull thing in the world, like, genuinely. I don't understand why anyone wants to discuss me. <laughs> I really don't. So that was weird. That was weird, you know, and I I think, you know, the spirits were helping kind of guide me away from anything that was going to be particularly hurtful to me that, you know, they they have done amazing jobs in the past keeping me from seeing stuff that will hurt me online. There was one particular incident. I don't think I've shared this before, but someone had said something ghastly to me. For about three days, I couldn't go near Instagram. Every time I picked up my phone, thought, oh, I'll have a bit of a morning browse. 
I would just be overwhelmed with the with boredom. I just I was so bored by the idea of Instagram. I was like, oh, I just don't feel like it. Oh no, no. Or I was drawn away to other things that were more interesting. So for about three days, I wasn't on Instagram at all. Which is like I don't do that. I'm always on Instagram. But when I logged in, there were multiple comments saying. Oh my God, that was disgusting. I really hope Dorian didn't see that because that was clearly designed to be so triggering to them. And I'd been kept away from Instagram by the spirits for three days, so I never saw it. The comment itself was deleted. I don't know whether the person deleted it, whether Instagram deleted it. I don't know, but it mysteriously vanished and the spirits stopped me from seeing anything that really upset me. So... They're amazing. and You know, they're still in my life. They're still beautiful. I don't talk about them much because some of them don't particularly like being talked about. <laughs> um, so when it came to Googling myself, I do think they helped guide my eyes and the search results away from anything that really would have damaged me. But there were certain things I had to see in order to rectify and help and address the situation that was going on. So that was pretty brutal. It did feel like oh my God, everything I've ever posted on the internet is being just seen by so many people who despise me. And there's plenty out there um, because, you know, my internet activity is huge and goes back years. And, you know, like most of us, I'm careless about what I say or I used to be. And I've realised that I can't be careless about what I say and that's a good thing I don't think anyone should be careless about what they say not just online and not just because of repercussions like being cancelled but because it can hurt people's feelings and you can genuinely do damage with your words and I know that I have done that you know being autistic probably ADHD too I am a blabbermouth I don't censor myself well I say things that I think are a bit of a joke and I sometimes get it wrong like one example is when I was a kid I didn't I refused to wear my glasses so I couldn't see very well and I saw my uncle for the first time in about two years and I thought he'd shaved his head his hair was gone and it just looked like he had a buzz cut so I said oh my god you've gone bald and I was just joking because he'd had a buzz cut right like you can joke about that no he he'd gone bald and I'd just come out and just literally like laughed in his face like, oh my God, you've gone bald. Who says that? Who does that? That is not okay. <laughs> and I just did that. So, you know, when you, and that was like a genuine faux pas, but I should have realized, look, your eyesight is not good. Like you, you can't joke about people's appearance um, unless you're closer to, like I'm short-sighted, unless you're closer to them and you can see them well, don't make a joke that might actually really hurt someone's feelings about their appearance. Like, be certain about things you say. Um, but it's, you know, it is it is kind of distressing at the same time not being able to vocalise stuff because you suddenly realise that, you know, there are really no places on the internet that you can be honest and open anymore. Um, and this is something I've been meaning to talk about for quite a long time that I realised even before all the controversy, like, where do I go online to just make new friends and vent about stuff? Like, where is a forum that I can go that I'm interested in, that I can be anonymous and I can just chat? My interests, like the goth scene, uh, or support forums like an eating disorder forum, these are both things I talk about massively on uh, YouTube, which means that when I go to these forums, I'm not anonymous. Um, either I will see threads of people talking about me or when I post, you know my style of typing is very distinctive. People often comment to say, I read this in your voice. And I've had, like, my ex-best friend, you know him as Ash, um... I joined a forum once that Ash didn't know I was a member of, but he browsed it one day. And when I next saw him, he said, oh, my God, I was on this forum. You're a member too, right? Um, there's this user called blah, blah, blah. Um, is that you? And I was like, "That, that's me. How did you know that's me? I haven't shared any personal information. He was just like, it, it read in your voice. I could hear your voice. It was clearly you. So 
if I go on, say, an eating disorder forum or a goth forum, I have to create a character and be someone else. And in general, what happens is I just have to lurk. And I'm not a lurky person by nature. You know, I'm an Aries. I put myself on YouTube, for God's sake. I'm not a lurker. You know, I like to participate when it comes to online discussions. But if I become a member of any forum, I'll see a post and I'll read it. And I'll go in and I'll type out a reply. I edit it, I edit it, I edit it. And I just delete it because it's not worth the risk of being outed as me. Um, Because I just came to that forum to be anonymous like anyone else. And I can't do that anymore unless it's an interest that I don't talk about much online, like, say, horse riding. I'm sure I could go into a horse riding thing and be completely anonymous because I don't talk about that much on here. Um... But obviously, if you talk about the things that are really central to your life on YouTube, you burn your anonymity on a bonfire. And th- I mean, this sounds so... I know to some people this this is going to sound very um, kind of egocentric and, and weird when I'm, you know, I'm not even a particularly big channel, you know, compared to a lot of people who are out there who've got like millions and millions of followers. And I don't know how they do it. I really don't. Um, you know, YouTubing is is this weird thing. Like, like, you've got people who are genuinely in the public eye and they've got all of, you know, everything I've described times like a billion. But they've, you know, they've got a whole team around them. They've got agents, they've got managers, they've got assistants, they've got people looking after them, they've got a team who are there to support them in times of conflict. But when you're a kind of, like, medium-sized YouTuber. You you don't have any of these things yet. You, you know, it's just you. So when the shit goes down, it's just you. There's no one you can lean on. And if you don't have a big friendship group, then I do think it's very dangerous. And I, I do... I mean, actually, this is stupid. I was about to say one day we are going to lose someone to cancel culture. Someone is going to kill themselves over cancel culture. But actually, I looked it up and it's already happened. You know, if if you're ever going through something like this and people really come at you on the Internet and you think I'm going to kill myself and I'm finally going to make this culture of hatred go away, you know, I'm going to mention it in my suicide note. I'm going to post it publicly. It's it's going to make this hate stop. You're deluded. Your death will be for nothing um, because it has already happened. The presenter of Love Island, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on her name, but the presenter of Love Island basically had this happen, you know, tons of online hatred and she committed suicide and I didn't even, I hadn't even heard about it. I hadn't even heard that someone that famous had killed themselves over the amount of hatred coming at them on particularly Twitter. Um, And there have been other cases too. You know, a lot of the Love Island contestants have killed themselves too. And it's just seen as a weird psychological tragedy that, oh my God, people can't deal with this show. They need to vet their contestants more carefully. No one looks at the world culture in general of like, you know what, maybe we should all kind of like think a little bit before we spout off about anyone on our social media ever. And I'm as absolutely as guilty as anyone else is about this, about being mean to people when I know or think they're not in the room. So, you know, you watch an episode of The Apprentice and you absolutely blast off about how obnoxious the contestants are. For a while after December, I I did get so touchy about saying or hearing even anything harsh said about anyone. I just felt like just, is it really worth it? Is it, you know, is it really worth speaking harsh words about anyone ever unless it's genuinely justified? Like if someone is just a bit annoying to you today, like it can be really hurtful to be to be told, oh my God, this person is just so annoying. Like the way they speak is just so annoying. Like, ugh, the way they repeat their words is really irritating or, oh, they're so boring or like they just, they really think they're funny and they're just not funny. The kind of things that, you know, we say about people all the time, it's like, was it really worth potentially hugely denting someone's self-esteem for years just to get some 
little mosquito of irritation off your chest. Um, and that's something I've become a lot more conscious of. And I think, you know, obviously it's a natural thing to do. You know, bitching about other people is a part of a backbone, I feel like, of the human experience. It's just something we do. And in a better world, maybe we won't do it anymore. But it, at the moment, it's, it's something we do. And I feel like if you're talking on a locked down social media, so like Facebook and it's a friends only post and you're talking about a celebrity who's never going to see it, then fair dues. Although, you know, you say something mean, usually people comment back and they say something mean and it turns into this very unpleasant kind of slating of other people. And I would say if you're on something public, like, you know, you're on Twitter or you're on Reddit or whatever, and you post something public about someone who's in the public eye thinking they'll never see it in a million years, these things do pop up very easily on Google, actually. They can end up seeing this thing that you probably don't even remember saying because it was such a minor thing to you to say it. And if it's such a minor thing, why bother saying it in the first place when it can do so much damage? And, you know, you learn so much from, you know, any time that, that controversy blows up on your channel. You do learn so, so much. And it does really make you grow as a person. But I feel like it also damages you immensely because it happens. It's growth that's forced on you so fast that your brain just can't deal with it. Maybe in my case for recent things, though, that that is less to do with the controversy and more to do with my mental state before it that already... Before everything kicked off in December, I was just not happy at all. Um, I haven't been happy for the you know the past year, uh, the past two years actually. Um, if you saw my video about the crazy spiritual stuff that has been going on for the past two years, um, that is still actually going on, and um, it's you know it's not terrible today. It's not crazy and wild and and worth telling a story about the way it was. But I don't really get to feel joy in anything. Um, and my eating disorder relapse largely continued because I did not want to be on this planet anymore. Um, and I have said that before. And when I last updated, I was like, but I'm, you know, I'm quite happy being on this planet right now. I have moments where it's like that. Yeah, I wasn't lying at the time, but these moments seem to come along less and less frequently, to be honest. Um, and they seem to be briefer and briefer. Uh, so most of the time, I, I don't really want to be here, um, honestly. And what I'm planning to do, <laughs> before you freak out, like I'm, I'm not talking suicide plans here. What I'm planning to do is I'm planning to get a life between lives um, past life regression session done. Sorry, we're, we're going totally off into batshit crazy spiritualistic territory here, I'm afraid. But um, it, you know, it pertains to my views of suicide and all of this. So that's the relevance here. About a year or two ago, one of you guys sent me this amazing book. It wasn't this one. It was another book by the same author, Michael Newton. Um, I think it was called Destiny of Souls or something the first book I read that one of you guys sent me he hypnotizes people very deeply I've had hypnotherapy before it was very very effective it was very good um but this guy he found or he claims you know who knows if anything is real he claims to have found a way of hypnotizing people back to not just their past lives but also to their lives between lives so what they were doing in the spirit world, basically, and why they came to earth in this incarnation, why they decided they wanted this life, what they hoped to get from it, what they hoped to learn from it, blah, 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 blah. Also, he claims that oftentimes you or always everyone comes from a group of souls. So the people in your life have often been with you in past lives before. So like there'll be soulmates who you frequently date or marry or whatever in different lives. You know, your sister in this current life may have been your mother or your daughter in a previous life. Things like this. This is what he claims. So anyway, I have found somebody fairly local who has followed the same school of teachings and who does life between lives regression sessions. So I'm hoping to get in touch with this person and um, book a session, basically. 
I am very skeptical. Like I, you know, I've tried a bit of past life regression, you know, YouTube tapes and stuff before. I've had some experiences that were intensely real um, that <clears throat> in my mind, like, yeah, that, that I was seeing a past life. Yes. But there was a spirit around guiding when that happened. When I've tried on my own, I've just I've seen basically nothing or I've seen something that I was pretty sure I imagined. So I am very skeptical and very cynical of this whole hypnotizing you back to your life between lives. I'm I'm skeptical. So for one, I'm curious. But for two, I feel it's going to be good for me when it comes to depression and to feeling like I don't want her and want to be here anymore. Um, I think it will help me know, is there a reason that I'm going through this? Is there something I'm meant to learn in this lifetime? Like, what is the general purpose of this? And I think it also might show me some lovely things when it comes to the spirits who are in my life at the moment, that some of them, you know, some of them I apparently did know in previous lives. So I'm intrigued to see, okay, I'd love to know more about that. I would love to. And I can feel a really like buzzing feeling in the room right now too. So I think that feeling is mutual. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so this is, this is the current thing that, that I'm kind of yeah, I want, I want to know what my life is about and why I'm supposed to be here and why I'm supposed to be going through all of this at the moment. And, oh, why, why is there so much emotion in the room right now? There is a lot of emotion in the room right now and it's not coming from me. Um, <laughs> this happens quite a lot in this room now. This, this is what happens when you're a bit clairsentient and you have spirits around you. You get waves of, of strange emotion that sometimes you can understand and sometimes you can't <laughs> and um and all of that but um anyway I'm, I'm also hoping for a change of medication with my medication people if I can get this change of medication I think I will feel a lot better however the medication I'm asking for I don't think they're going to prescribe me it so that's another big thing that I feel like is this seesaw that I'm perilously bal balancing on at the moment is kind of waiting for that but um anyway so yes so everything that went down in December it, it kind of was really quite a light straw on the camel's back in terms of what was already there but it, it did make me feel like I want to expunge my entire existence. I want to take as much me off the internet as I possibly can. And honestly, I would like to also take me off the planet and have never been born and never have had anyone know me and <laughs> all of that. Uh, you know, and I, I didn't go that far, obviously. I'm still here talking to you. Um, but... Um, yeah, taking taking some of myself off the internet was was you know, a safer way for me to just release some of that feeling, I think. So hopefully that's an apology and explanation if you are missing the music or the Angry Vampires blog or anything like that. Um, the Angry Vampires blog, I will probably start them a new one at some point because um, there's just too much admin to do on like a whole decade's worth of posts and re-editing and all of that. So I think at some point they will get a new blog. I am, as soon as the Nostalgia Project is like submitted to a publisher who will publish it and I can get back to working on my vampire novels, the Angry Vampires characters will have their own novels and they will, they will have their own series of novels. This has been my dream for a decade now. I don't know if it will ever happen. I don't know if those books will ever be good enough, realistically speaking. But I would love it to happen. I really would. I love those characters. I love writing about them. I miss writing about them since the Nostalgia Project started, although I've been, you know, I love creating anything. Um, but I have missed writing about my vampire characters. So, um, so you know, that, that will be back to an extent at some point. The music I'm working on or I will be working on. But, yeah, the, you know, basically it was it was a case of I don't want to exist. I have to release it in some way. And to just make my music and stuff not exist was safer than harming myself, obviously. <laughs> so, um, so there was that. But uh, anyway, the main reason I turned on this camera was because the other day I was having quite a happy day and I went to Instagram and I was going to post about it on Instagram like usual. And then I thought, don't. You need to stop 
shit posting so much on Instagram. Basically, you need to stop just waffling on and on and on in your captions because you don't remember what you've said. Um, I have a terrible memory for, I mean, I have a great memory for a lot of things and a terrible memory for other things. When it's just shit that I've waffled, like it's, it's unnecessary crap. It's probably boring to most people. I don't remember what I said and I'm just putting way too much of me out there on the internet. Um, you know, for a lot of people who I do click with and a lot of you guys who I, you know, I would love to know better and I would love to be friends with in real life if we were closer. But obviously, statistically speaking, percentage-wise speaking, there's a lot of people out there too who are hate-clicking me, who are hate-viewing me. Instagram is a public forum. It's not the place for private stuff once people are kind of interested in your life. Um, and I, I hate that. Because I I love Instagram and I love I love feeling like Instagram is um, a place that I can be real and open in, but I'm starting to realise there's no way you can be open and real anymore. Particularly, not really. Only on your Facebook, which has really only real life friends on it. I think if I was younger, I think you know if I was Generation Z. I would understand this and it, it would be like, look, dude, of course the internet's not anonymous. It never has been. Things go viral. Anything can go viral. People can get your IP address. People can dox you. Um, everything is on the internet forever. Nothing's anonymous. Don't be ridiculous, you know. But the internet I grew up with was so different and I'm having such a, like an old person moment with with just the lack of anonymity that, that I have now online is is bizarre to me. So anyway, I turned on this camera because I went to make that Instagram post and I thought, no, I know you're happy and I know you have things to say, but stop shit posting on Instagram. You've got to stop putting so much to you out on the internet. So I thought I would put it here instead and just tell you a little bit about the things that have made me happy in the last few days. So first of all, this is very random. This is a very random ending to this video, but I just want to show you some of the things that in the depths of feeling quite miserable, I have actually had a really happy past few days. Um, I can feel it waning now and the shit coming back, but um, I've had a really happy past few days and I've been making the maddest hat you have ever seen. I have been making a wizard's twizzly wizzly <laughs> hat. Uh, this is not remotely finished. The brim is only about half knitted, so the brim is not really there yet. But it's a wizzly swizzly wizard's hat. And um, this is my prototype one. This is just a test run. I'm such a newbie at crochet that I've learned so much on this. I've bought some much nicer yarn, so I'm going to make a second one, which is going to be way cooler. But this isn't even the hat, right? This is just the base of the hat. The hat is going to be covered in mushrooms. So I have <laughs> I have a couple of ooh, a couple of little mushrooms here. Can you see this one with the little frilly edge? He's a really cute little mushroom. This one kind of reminds me of a dog's penis with the red red tip on it. But um there's gonna be little little clusters of mushrooms springing up all over the hat. I don't know if I can I don't know if I can really um show you that here but you know there's there's going to be there's going to be clusters of mushrooms all over it there's going to be little dots like spores there's going to be a ruffle like mushrooms have under the brim it's a really 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 crazy hat and when I started it I didn't even know how to do some of the most basic stitches in crochet but I saw this pattern I was like this is the most wild gorgeous thing I've ever seen if I can even half do this I will feel so proud of myself so I started and my hands are basically out of action at this point I've done so much crocheting I can hardly force the crochet hook through anymore because my hands are so stiff and achy so I'm having to take a bit of a break but I have enjoyed it so much and just these these little cute little mushrooms oh my god they're gonna be on my head soon it's amazing so I've been doing that it's been making me so happy um also I had an amazing package come through from one of you guys whose name I'm terribly afraid I'm going to pronounce this wrong but Ravina am I saying it right Ravina 
I got a gorgeous package with some lovely witchy things in some beautiful things. Oh my god, I haven't actually got it over here, but they sent me a waffle, a multicolored rainbow colored waffle keychain and that made me so happy. I haven't put it on my keys yet, but I absolutely must. I think it will be a good reminder of the fact that even when I feel like I hate doing this as a job actually that's bullshit and that's a fleeting feeling hopefully and most of the time I love doing this and all of that you know just just to be reminded you know what waffles waffles you like making your waffles so yes the rainbow colored waffle meant everything to me the other thing all I have left now is the card but the other thing that I went absolutely hog wild over was that they sent me some candy canes that I could actually eat. I haven't been able to eat candy canes or any kind of sucky sweet for nearly a decade because of being allergic to um, the colourings. Peppermint candy is my favourite in the world and Christmas candy is so lovely and candy canes are amazing. I hang them on the tree every year but I can't eat them. And these ones, they're from Yum Earth and they are coloured with natural vegetable dyes and I could eat them and I didn't get ill at all. It was amazing. But ah, uh, I'd forgotten so many things about eating peppermint candy. The way the air tastes minty when you breathe it afterwards and just the feeling of it. Oh my God, a decade without candy. And then ah. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. So thank you so, so, so much. And I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but thank you so much, Ravenna. That was absolutely amazing. And um, the final thing that has been making me happy is quite a predictable thing and is probably going to make a lot of people groan. But um, <laughs> I have been rereading. I have been rereading Breaking Dawn. I finally bought myself a book copy of Breaking Dawn because usually I have it on a Kindle but I can't find my flipping Kindle at the moment and honestly I prefer real books to Kindles particularly when it's a big book like this and it's one that you really love and you like to go back to certain bits and reread them. Yes I know I'm sorry I'm using a Covid mask as a bookmark and it's disgusting. <laughs> it's a clean one, it is a clean one but um, it's just not very glamorous. Is it? <laughs> but um, yeah reading Reading the Twilight books again is bringing me quite a lot of joy. It's such comfort reading for me. And it's so interesting how I see it now that um, as I've gotten older, due to certain things, my stance on human life versus like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool to be a vampire? Um, my stance on that has really changed a lot and this book basically if you haven't read it I don't think I'm giving away spoilers by saying that Bella becomes a vampire at the end so for half the book she's human and for half the book she's a vampire when I used to reread this book I would always skip straight to the vampire bit because I'd be like look I want to get to the good bit I want to see her as a vampire like that's so much cooler than being human but as I've gotten older I've become less afraid of aging that was one huge thing and I've had certain very magical experiences with spirits that have taught me how beautiful the fragility of human life is and now I I love <laughs> I love seeing the way these kind of immortal almost angelic creatures take care of this little fragile human in their midst this is the really beautiful thing to me now about the twilight books and I, I love to read those bits and obviously when she becomes a vampire it's it's um it's it's very interesting you know she she kind of she gains so much but she loses the specialness I think of changing and growing and the, the fact that some of the vampires actually envy her because they want to have changing bodies and they want to have a life that changes and that, that includes children and old age and all these experiences and it's so interesting it's you can have so many different takes on on a book that you know most people regard as very simple and kind of tedious and ridiculous like Twilight and, <laughs> and actually yeah I find it such comfort rereading and I'm loving rereading it again and um, I, I haven't gone all the way from the beginning this time so I think I'm gonna go back and read Midnight Sun again after this one um, but uh, yeah so that's been that's been making me very happy but mostly my crazy hat crocheting my crazy hat until my hands are 
aching like hell has been making me very 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 happy um and um yeah i've i've been feeling kind of weird when it comes to makeup and stuff lately i've just not been feeling inspired to wear it i am really loving this dark brown wig my actual hair right now i'll put up a picture is very very bright neon pink so it's a bit of a weird contrast the fact that i've dyed my actual hair neon pink but for some reason i'm preferring to cover it up but i just feel like this look kind of you know goths we're all about showing how we feel inside with our stylistics and i feel like this is kind of how i feel inside at the moment is just a little bit plainer and blanker and less kind of in your face and like a happy little cartoon character than I usually seem I guess is how I feel so uh this right now although this looks very very bland and dull this is this is kind of creative creative exploration and all of that to me right now because it's it's not what I actually look like underneath underneath I'm bright pink but uh, I don't feel like a perky cartoon character so it, it seems weird to represent myself as such so uh, while I'm talking about real stuff um, I thought I will just sort of throw on what makes me feel like I look on the outside the way I feel on the inside since that's kind of the whole point of goth stylistics to me but uh, anyway if you're still here thanks for listening if you've got any other suggestions for things that you reckon might make me quite jolly or that might make anyone quite jolly because I think this time of year there are a lot of people who are feeling quite miserable in the world um definitely are actually you know looking around my friendship group at the moment there are definitely a lot of people really struggling I think um you know we're, we're on what the third year of the pandemic now um you know some people are in lockdown all of this it's it is a very very difficult time even if you don't have anything explicitly difficult going on in your life outside of lockdown and all of that it's a difficult time for everyone um, so if you have any happy making ideas, just a list of things that make you happy, maybe that's the thing everyone should post in the comments, even if you can only think of one thing, even if it's sleeping, <laughs> then uh, post something that makes you feel cheerful in the comments, that might be quite cool, and then we'll see how many people made it to the end of the video, so I'm anticipating there won't be many of those comments because this is a very long video right now, but um, yes, I am looking forward to getting in touch with this Life Between Lives um, hypnotherapist guy, I will obviously, unless it's, unless something really personal happens with it, I will let you know how it goes, uh, whether I think it's a sack of shit, <laughs> whether I think it's like pure imagination or whether I genuinely feel like, oh my God, this is, this is what the spirit world is like. Oh my God. Like if I have that kind of experience that I think I will probably have to share at least some of it with you, um, and tell you a bit about what it was like. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a ring tomorrow, I think, and try and book a session. I'm genuinely excited about this session. I haven't even booked it yet. So that's cool. Um, so on that high note, I will end and shut up here. So uh, thank you for listening. If you made it this long, are you mad? <laughs> this is a very, very long video. So if you've tolerated me this long, you're wonderful or probably asleep. So I hope I don't wake you up. So uh, anyway, night night <laughs> over and out. Bye bye.